Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor Strange. <laughs> Why, thank you. Yeah. It's kind of an echo of conversation, isn't there? Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, we're delighted to be back, or I guess... Uh, I guess I would be honest to say I'm lucky uh, just to be able to stand here. One of the things that I did while on this trip to Texas is I contracted COVID. And uh, so uh, that meant we got to drive all the way home uh, with me just bright pink and uh, positive. Uh, I had made plans in my head to record this. If I couldn't be here, I had made plans with Mitch uh, to help, uh, you know, some do something. And then fortunately this morning uh, when I tested, uh, I tested uh, negative. So I am something. Um, what I've discovered about this is uh, um, we are taking this entirely too casually. We've gotten too used to it. Uh, it is far more contagious than you imagine. Uh, we cannot figure out where I would have gotten it. Uh, Betsy was with me the whole time in the car all the way home two days. She didn't get it. Of all the people we were with, none of them got it but one who so far as we know hasn't given it to anybody else. But it's just amazing how this, this goes, how quickly you have it and, uh, and fortunately how uh, how quickly you can recover, but that is not always the case. In any case, uh, my appreciation to those who have filled in uh, two weeks uh, uh, for me this month, and that's not only those who have been in the pulpit, but for those of you as leaders who have stepped up and uh, uh, done your usual good job. So, it is good to be back, and one of the things that will happen is when we finish, I'm gonna run away for your sake and hide uh, or if you'd like uh, to spend the week at home, uh, not uh, able to breathe or sleeping all the time, I'll be glad to hug you and give you a kiss. So uh, you take what you want here. So uh, let's uh, turn to our announcements. Uh, uh, there are uh, some of these mentioned, and I guess the most important is to remind you yet again, next Sunday being Memorial Day Sunday, our service will be at 9.30. Now for those of you not paying attention, that's an hour earlier. So that if you show up here next week at 10.30, you'll be cleaning up the sanctuary while the rest of us on our way over to Hebron uh, for the Memorial Day service. So next week, uh, 9.30. Uh, the CWO outing is June 1st. Is there someone here to elaborate on that for us? We're going down to the Harrison's, Harrison Street. Yeah. And if you're supposed to wear red hats if you have one. Wear red hats if you got them, if you want to. Yeah, okay. All right. Other than that, it's a complete secret. Tell every female you know. All right. Uh, Haley is not with us today because she is graduating. Um, so our congratulations to her, and I know that you honored her and others last week. Are there any other announcements or any changes or additions to our concerns list? Yes. Um, this is for the ladies. Last year we went to an outing called Ladies Affair, and it was held out on at that pretty Stone Creek Lodge. Ah. It's time for that again. Um, if you want your own flyer, they are out in the hallway. But I have a flyer to pass around that I need your name on because I have to give a number. Um, if you didn't go with us, when you go in there, there are the amount of purses that even a store doesn't carry. <laughs> and you get to look at them all before, and then we have tea and all kinds of pastries, and then they say go. And then it's just Pretty, pretty crazy. That's not the same flyer. That's not the same flyer I have on my clipboard. Okay? What's that flyer on there for? Okay, this is something new, sorry. It is a different date totally. Um, this one is June 12th. It's not the day of Harrison's. Okay. So I'm going to pass this around. All right. Just put your name on the, on the sheet. And okay, I'm going to start back over here. Okay, thank you. Yes, Ms. Kim. An agenda to that is it is a fundraiser for the Women's Resource Center in Crawfordsville. Yeah. Thank you. 
Any other additions? Yes, ma'am. I have two concerns I'd like to put on our military list. Okay. One is Gus Hancock, and the other one is Dalton Smith. Okay. I see Cindy writing that down. Any others? Well, then let's uh, turn our hearts and minds to the worship of God as Debbie prepares us. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning. And would you please join with our response, join in our responsive call to worship? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Open your hands to the Lord, for the Lord is good. Let those whom the Lord has redeemed give praise to the Lord, their God. Oh, let all of the people who call upon the Lord. Sing praises to the name that is above all names. The Lord will satisfy the longing in our souls. God fills the hunger in our souls. Fill it with praise to the Lord. Fill us with love, praise to the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And now join us in our hymn of praise. Take time to be holy, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Please bow your heads and join with me to praise the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit through our prayers. We come to give our thanks for the privilege of living in a country whose motto is in God we trust and gives us the privilege to worship as we may so choose. There can be no greater blessing than this, and we thank the Lord for it. Lord, it is an also time where the world is again at a pivot point with a European war, and please be with those who are defending their homeland. And as this Memorial Week starts to begin, may we rejoice in remembrance of those who sacrificed so much on this coming Memorial Day. And Lord, if it should be thy will, please send your healing power and spirit into each of us, and we may by our actions impart it to others whom are more needful. Amen. And now we come to the time in our service, a time for giving. And may to each of you, to the best of your ability, give of your time and money and funds to help us support the ministry here at this church. What's this thing in your hand? Flashlight. A flashlight. Do you know what? Graham likes to keep a flashlight by my um, bedstand or on my bedstand. You want to try it? Okay. Can you? Sh it work? Does it work? Okay. If it didn't work, we'd need what? What would we need for it? Battery. A new battery. That's right. Can you put it over there for Graham? Um, so I like to keep a flashlight just in case. Um, the power goes off, and then I have a way to see. I want to be ready. I, I need to be ready. Um, there's a story here. Maybe we ever put this over here. We'll put it right over here for a minute, okay? There's a story in the Bible that Jesus tells us about being ready. And let me find it here for you guys. So I don't want to miss any of it. Um, before I do, let me show you this picture. This right here, look, Atticus. See these girls? This is this this one right here. She's getting married, and these are her bridesmaids. See these, Opie? These are the bridesmaids, and this is the bride. Do you happen to know who that bride is? Who is that right there? I don't know. You don't know? That's your mom. 
battery. That is a battery. So I want you to see what a bridesmaid looks like, okay? Now listen and keep your feet quiet so you can hear the story from the Bible. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Look, I have a lamp. Can you see it, Atticus? Can you see it, Savannah? Can you see it, Opie? Okay, that's a lamp. They took a lamp. Five of them were foolish, and five of them were wise. What's it mean to be foolish? What if I took, what if I took my lamp and I didn't have any way to light it or have, have a fuel in it? Would that be bad? That would be foolish. But what if I took my lamp and I had extra oil? That would be good, wouldn't it? Okay, so the wise ones are good because they remember to take extra things. They're going to be ready. But the foolish ones, they didn't take any extra. So, when the bridegroom was delayed, they all fell asleep because it was late and they were getting tired of waiting. But at midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. Well, all those bridesmaids, they came out to get their lamps ready. But the foolish ones, guess what? We don't have enough oil. Will you give us some? But you know what the wise men, the wise ones said? We might not have enough. You'll need to go buy some. So the five that didn't bring any extra went off to buy oil. And the other five got their lamps ready. And guess what? The bridegroom got there. And they were ready and went to the marriage feast. Um, but later, the foolish ones got there and the door was locked and they could not get in. Um, this is the part I want you to remember. So you too must keep watch for you do not know the hour of my return. Here's what G Jesus is saying. Jesus wants to be our forever friend, right? And he's going to come back. And if he says it, it's going to happen. So you know what we need to do? We need to be ready. Like, I need to have my battery ready for my flashlight. I need to have oil so my lamp will burn. We need to read God's Word. Where do we find God's Word? I know you. In the Bible. In the Bible. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and then we need to obey it and do what it says, right? Obey it. Uh, Follow I, God's rules. I need to fix your flashlight. You can fix it? Okay. And then we need to trust, trust God, don't we? We need to trust him, and we need to trust. And Jesus says he's coming back. He's going to come back, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He is. That's right. So we're going to trust him with all of our heart. And one more thing that I think we need to do, Atticus. It works. Can you act like Jesus? Oh, let's don't put, don't, no, let's don't shine nice, okay? What, can you act like Jesus? Sure. Can you act like Jesus? Can you act like Jesus? So how do we act like Jesus? <laughs> well, we're going to help you figure out some ways. How can we, what can we do? Can we love others? Yes. Can we help others? Yes. We can. We, so we're going to do those things. And you know what? When, we're, when our light is shining, oh, we're showing other people what Jesus' love is like, isn't it? So we're going to watch and be ready. And Mr. Nichols, will you come light our, so we can see what it looks like with a light? Here, I'll just, we'll just move down here on this step. Oh, he's going to go back there. And, um, you know, look and see. Oh, look. We're going to keep our lights brightly shining for Jesus when he comes back, okay? Sit down here, Savannah. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. All right, that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep singing and praising and reading and learning and growing, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, I did many. You are. Awesome. Can, all right, we're going to pray. Can fold your hands or, dear God, we thank you so much for sending Jesus and, and we know that that he's coming back because he said so. So we need to be ready. We need to read your word, obey it, and we trust you, Lord, that you are coming for us. We love you and thank you. Amen. Here, where's your little? Are you going to go to the new? Well, 
Probably not today. Why? Well, because I didn't plan far, far enough ahead. Oh, it's okay if we can play. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> Betsy's Uncle Bob, formerly known as the Reverend Dr. Robert Dow Nicholson, is a retired minister in the United Presbyterian Church. Uh, Bob uh, lives alone, his wife uh, of 60 years having died several years ago, and I kind of have the vision of him kind of brooding over what is happening in our world. This uh, moves him to write. And from uh, occasion to occasion, he will write a morning prayer and send it to me. Now, in case you wonder why you should listen to a prayer from somebody in Seattle, I guarantee you he watches this service every time it is broadcast and contacts us to find out why it is not, if it's not. So he knows us and he keeps track of uh, us and cares about us. And whether you wrote this for us today or not, it uh, so resonated with what I was feeling, uh, we will share it today. With that in mind, let's prepare our hearts and minds for this prayer by singing Sanctuary. continue in prayer. Oh God, right now as we look as Jesus did to Jerusalem and prayed, oh Jerusalem, if only you knew today what is needed for peace, but you cannot see it. We too look out to our land, land of our fathers and mothers, land of the pilgrim's pride, land where so many have died for freedom and offer the same prayer. O oh, America, if only you knew today what is needed for peace, but you cannot see it. Words fail us as we mourn the loss of so many lives to violence, racial hatred, domestic terrorism. We cry out as on Palm Sunday, save us, Hosanna, come and deliver us from this nightmare of mass shootings, nearly 200 since the start of 2022. God of all the days of our lives and God of our heart and our lives, we turn to you. So much has happened to us in these last few years, even the last few months, the last few days. A kind of whirlwind of tragedy with challenging times, political disruptions and deceptions and unsettled nerves. Help us discern what we shall become as we look back to where we have been. On this day, give us grateful hearts for this beloved congregation, members young and old, the music that melodies this sanctuary and this community, the service and compassion that has blessed and benefited those in need, the care and concern, the visits and the notes that has brought comfort and encouragement to those isolated, alone, struggling in times of sickness and death. Keep us focused, keep us faithful, Hold us in your love and care. Save us from weak resignation to the status quo, for sitting back, sitting out, closing our eyes. 
O oh, loving Father, your grace is sufficient in every need, in every place, and every time. Your power has seen us through challenging circumstances before, but it seems none like this. Be with us now. May our days ahead be rooted in a faith we hold and a faith that holds us. In the joy of believing, thinking, imagining, serving, visioning, forgiving, and loving, your love will not let us go, and nothing can separate us from that love. We pray for wisdom and guidance during this time. May each of us and our church be a sign of hope, comfort, and above love to all in this time and darkness, despair and disbelief. For this we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Yeah. Our scripture today is to taken from two passages from the Old Testament. The first is from Isaiah 40, the 27th through the 31st verse. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The second in the 138th Psalm, and I warn you in advance that this is the contemporary English version, so it will not read exactly like your pew Bible. With all my heart I praise you, Lord. In the presence of angels I sing your praises. I worship at your holy temple and praise you for your love and your faithfulness. You were true to your word and made yourself more famous than ever before. When I asked for your help, you answered my prayer and gave me courage. All kings on this earth have heard your promises, Lord, and they will praise you. You are so famous that they will sing about the things you have done. Though you are above us all, you care for humble people, and you keep a close watch on everyone who is proud. I am surrounded by trouble, but you protect me against my angry enemies. With your own powerful arm, you keep me safe. You, Lord, will always treat me with kindness. Your love never fails. You have made us what we are. Don't give up on us now. Will you join me now in our prayer of illumination, Spirit of the Living God?
In case you're not aware, Betsy and I have just completed two trips, each a week long and a thousand miles each way. In between those two vacations, we spent six days celebrating Betsy's birthday. One day is not enough for her. <laughs> when you load your calendar with such activity, you really have to plan ahead, which is how I came up with the idea for this sermon. Uh, these two trips, one to the East Coast to see my niece and meet her teenage children, and one to Texas to see friends, were all relational going to see and to spend time with people, separated by distance and time. When we are on these trips, we sing along. That is, our car is a rolling karaoke bar, <laughs> and all the songs are nostalgia, some of them almost as old as Betsy is. I just had to get that in there, you know. So as I thought about today, my mind kept going back to, of course, songs. And back to a song from Godspell, that 1971 musical based on the parables of Jesus. It was, if you remember, for its time, revolutionary. And I remember a church in the town in which we were serving being picketed because it was going to perform Godspell right in the sanctuary. Can you imagine? Here we are decades later and people are still flying off the handle in outrage about, well, almost everything. In a nation that seems bent on rending itself apart, what does the church have to say? Well, some say we should take sides. And in my opinion, they have co-opted the church for their own political agenda. And at the least in the minds of the unchurched, portrayed Christians as being haters. What my heart was searching for was a message of peace. So what I kept remembering was the gentle words of the song that sold the most singles from God's spell, the song Day by Day. Since music provides the counterpoint rhythm to what I think and feel and know, I will summarize what I want to say to you with the words of that song. In the musical, it is a prayer, the words going back to the 13th century. Dear Lord, these thing, three things I pray, to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly. To see, to love, to follow. We live in an age where we are instantly connected to whatever is happening, even in the remotest parts of the world. Within minutes last weekend, we were shattered with the news of the shootings in Buffalo, New York. Each newscast from the Ukraine has images that we are always warned are disturbing to watch, as the reality of modern war is live on our screens. We are so connected that it is no longer uncommon for a person to be carrying on a conversation face to face with a person while also carrying on a message by text with another. On our trip we navigated with a built-in navigational system while my co-pilot was finding places for us to eat on her phone. Despite all this information and so much of it visual, I have come to the conclusion that there is a great deal of blindness around. In one sense, it is natural and predictable. It is a result of being exposed to far too much information. Your mind simply cannot absorb it all. Further, you reach a point of overload where you feel that you not only cannot absorb anymore, you do not want to take in anymore. In a sense, it is a way we protect ourselves. You can only see so many mangled bodies of civilians in the Ukraine or starving children or the victims of cruelty and violence and racism. You will deal with only so many examples of hatred, violence, neglect, abuse, stupidity, and then you want to clamp your eyes shut, cover your eyes and yell, nah, to shut it all out, to drown it out, to push it away. 
Thus we suffer from a form of selective blindness. We do not want to see. We do not want to know. We see how insipid is racial discrimination and the violence against people of color it produces. And we are incensed, but shrug it off because there's nothing we can do. We tune it out. We look away. We ignore. It's all kind of like cataracts. That hazy film that develops over time over your eyes, usually so slowly that we really do not notice how blinded we have become. As persons of faith in an all-knowing God is one who keeps their eyes open, no matter how painful or dulling it might be, because our God-given senses were given to us so that we might know what the world is like because we were put here to deal with it. If there is a mess, we are here to clean it up. If there is violence from war to abuse, we are here to end it. But that will not happen if we are not willing to see more clearly. The new reality is we listen only to that which we already agree. That is, before we even look or hear, we've already made our mind up. Because of that, two Christians can be standing side by side and see the same thing in completely different ways. It makes me aware of how often Jesus said something like, let those who have eyes see. We are so lost in this predetermined viewpoint that the two of us side by side could say that phrase and mean the opposite. I harp on this because it is our condition. As a nation, as a people, and most particularly a church, and particularly a church seeking a pastor. How in the world can the search committee find someone when we do not realize while we say we want the same thing, we probably mean very different things. Lord, this I ask, to see more clearly. While seeing is good, and while we have all developed the ability to stop seeing, just seeing is not enough. Well, it is if all you plan to do is to go down to the coffee shop tomorrow morning and talk about how awful it all is. But the second part of the prayer says, to love you more dearly. What an abused word love has become. We love everything. We love our spouse. We love chocolate. By saying and using that word so much, it may mean we don't really love anything. Love in our culture is primarily emotional. It's about feelings. And it is because of that that divorce is epidemic. What do we expect when you get married because you're in love? Which means our hearts are all fluttery and when you're around the one you love, but then your emotions are mercurial change with even greater rapidity than Indiana weather. Love is made of tougher stuff. Love is that to which you commit your life and to which you give your life. Love is not about how the other makes you feel, but that you live and you draw life from the other. When Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God, he meant for you to love your God, to draw your life, your meaning, and your purpose, and your value from God. When Jesus said the second commandment is to love one another, he meant that you live for one another. You find your life, your meaning, your purpose, your value from living a life of love for others. The words of the scriptures that have haunted me since I first read them in college and have ended up leading me to invest so much time in recovery efforts were those of the great social prophets of the Old Testament. And when I say social prophets, I mean those who made it clear that the way to know if you're doing God's will is to not look at how you as an individual in the society in particular lives. It is to see how you treat others that have the least. The phrase love more dearly means to live for others and most particularly for those who need you the most and those who can do the least for you. For me it has come to mean the people of the Gulf Coast and particularly those of the lower ninth ward in New Orleans. For you it might be something completely different. 
But if you are not giving your life for the sake of God's children, you're not really living, and you're certainly not loving. God has gifted every one of us with an amazing array of talents, gifts, abilities, interests, and each life here is a treasure trove of experiences and understanding. Do you think God gave you those just to sit on them? Love more dearly. Who? You will be surprised when you see more clearly just how very many there are for you to love more dearly. Which leads us to the third, to follow thee more nearly. We normally call that is a role model, which is a way of asking after whom do you model your life. I'll give you one way of understanding how powerful that is in our culture. Try, try mentally answering these questions. What comes to your mind when you think of a person of grace and power? What comes to your mind when you think of a real man? What do you imagine when you say a most vibrant woman? What musical group? is it that really turns you on? Other than trying to decide how many answers you would give to each category, we realize we all have answers to these. Advertising lives off our hero worship and has learned like our celebrity has that you no longer have to be clean and pure cut. To celebrity, be a celebrity means to have notoriety. I have yet to figure out who and what a Kim Kardashian is. <laughs> but she is a celebrity. She has her own TV show. She has a business out of being a celebrity. She must be important. And you know, we all wish we could emulate that kind of behavior. What if I gave you a different list of role models? I wonder how quickly these would come to your mind. Let's try, shall we? What comes to your mind when I ask, Who's the most ethical person you know? Who's the most caring person you know? Who's the most spiritual person you know? Who's the most Christ-like person you know? Did those names come flying to your mind? If not, it might be because we don't look for and at people like that. Shouldn't we? While we allow advertising to make us feel inferior about our looks, our age, the stuff we don't have, and the things we don't spend time and effort on, we select role models for the most important parts of our lives, but it is not for our relationship with God and other people. I suspect that every person here over the age of 30 can name one person that looms large in their lives as one who had the most effect on the world of your life. Who was it for you? Was it some political figure like FDR, Truman, Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa? Perhaps it was something more personal, a parent, teacher, a coach, someone whose life affected yours. To follow more nearly means above all else to work at making your life resonate in perfect harmony to the heartbeat of God. If you have ever tried tuning a stringed instrument, you know that it is a matter of getting that string to match the pitch you seek. Only you have to have a pitch to match. The perfect pitch for human harmony is that of God. We should be investing energy in finding those persons who inspire us to be better people, more godly people, people who reflect Christ in the way they live, the way they speak, the way they treat others, the way they value things, the way they use their lives. And here's the joker in this discussion. Whether or not you know it, right now at this very moment, you are being an inspiration, positively or negatively, to other persons. 
Now granted, you might be inspiring them to be more concerned to text message a friend than to participate in worship, or inspiring them to join you in getting back some of the rest that you missed last night. But on the other hand, your being here, just being here, might be helping another to understand that this faith thing is important. The very way you participate in this service, the spirit that you display, might be affecting another. You never know. As true as that is here, it is even more so out there. Our scripture lesson from Isaiah is one of those best known passages. Those who wait, that means who place their hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. You will have strength you cannot imagine. The Lord will empower you. The imagery we draw from that is the ability to rise above, to soar up like an eagle. But consider this. The reasons the eagle soars so high is because of its remarkable vision. It rises to heights so that it can scan the earth below. We are to see, and once seeing, to love. When we do that, then we will complete the third part of this prayer, which is to follow thee more nearly. The psalmist captured that in the sixth verse of our psalm. Though you are above us all, you care for humble people, and you keep a close watch on everyone who's proud. To see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly. Make that your daily prayer. Make that your daily agenda. Would you stand if you're able and let's join in our response in song, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. to the time to depart from this place, I enjoin you as I always do to take whatever blessings, strength, understanding that you have gathered in this time and take it out and employ it in the world. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday at 930. Shall we join in our choral benediction? Mm -hmm.